Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. So this video is about the Saturn Pisces transit and this transit is happening for over two years or so. So this video is how this transit is changing your life. We have group number one, shark, number two, octopus, number three, cheetah. Pause the video if you have to, to see which group you're resonating with. Let's get into the readings. Hello, group number one. So when it comes to say the Saturn Pisces transit from the shark energy, I'm getting how this is changing your life is with you being more assertive i'm getting more assertive and more direct and more assertive more assertive and more direct is going to come through changes that are happening when it comes to say emotions and learning how to handle emotions like one of the things that i'm thinking about is say those of us who has struggled in the past with being a people pleaser fear of being liked by others i when it comes to this transit i'm getting the feeling that the saturn transit is going to say create situations where you become more emotionally stable emotionally aware and when it comes to say emotionally stable and aware to me it goes back to say self-awareness and us learning ourselves and setting proper boundaries so when i think of the shark energy that's something that's automatically coming out boundaries when it comes to this group boundaries with others but i feel like more than just boundaries it's like being assertive being okay to uh being okay to assert yourself like what this is bringing me to is how i used to always edit myself and hold myself back and even dim my light in certain situations just so that i wouldn't feel rejected or unwanted but i've learned that when you dim your light or people please like people don't really like you they just like the perks that comes with say you putting everybody else above yourself they like the benefits that come from that because the minute you start asserting boundaries it'll change some relationships or even close family members you know will get offended by your you switching up your boundaries because it's like you've changed and from the person who's changed perspective is like, yeah, I've changed to, you know, do what's best for me. But to everybody else, it's like it, it could be a bit offensive and it might seem selfish on their part because they benefited from, you know, your lack of, say, self-worth or people pleasing ways. But at the same time, for them, it's like this is just who you are, like really nice. You know, so with the shark energy is bringing me to when I realized that, you know, trying to be nice so people won't, so people will like you, people don't like you, people end up liking the you that they benefit from and the real you gets rejected. And I realized, you know, also trying to make people like you, especially when people are mistreating you or being nasty it's like it only comes with more abuse and disrespect so with the shark energy i'm getting more clarity around that because when i think of say saturn energy saturn brings structure pisces could be a bit dreamy and pisces like neptune energy is an energy that doesn't deal with boundaries there is no structure so it's hard to tell like what's real from what's not because everything is like molding together 
But with the shark energy dealing with the water, this is just bringing me to say clarity around one's emotions. And it's like, okay, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I feel about this. And this is what I feel about that. So I'm getting clarity around emotions. So I'm going to be um, working with four piles when it comes to say the reading. And, but first, the astro dice is going to help me to see like the area of your life that's going to be amplified big time. And it's going to be your family and home environment because the fourth house comes out, the number four comes out. So the number four deals with stability and security and foundation building, but the number four also deals with the fourth house. And Uranus energy there is, this is Uranus energy. And Uranus energy deals with, say, transformation as far as innovation being futuristic and sag deals with education so for some of you you might be standing your ground and deciding that you're going to go to college for what you want to go to college for and not what is going to make everybody else happy or proud of you that might be what is all said and done when it comes to this transit or not necessarily even going to college but with sagittarius energy or uranus energy is that you're going to learn about what you want to learn about like in my natal chart, I have Uranus and Sag and Uranus conjunct Jupiter. So when it comes to say learning or even teaching and explaining things, like I like to do things my way in a way that's unique and original to me. And I feel like when it comes to you guys, that's what it's going to come down to when it comes to say your education or what you're teaching, but also to with your family, your family dynamic, your family and friends, there's something futuristic unique and even rebellious about your approach and keep in mind when it comes to say the people in our lives and how they might respond to the new changes within you they're just used to you being a certain way so if it, if you feel rejected or feel like you know oh they're not allowing me it's not that they're not allowing most of the time is that we're looking to the people in our lives to validate us and give us permission and they can't give us permission on something they don't understand so just you know become aware of that like when you say oh they don't support me it's like is it support or validation you know because we have to validate ourselves so yeah when it comes to say the tarot also associated with that area of life we have the world card so with the world card coming up, I'm getting for some of you major transformation when it comes to, say, your home environment or even, you know, you deciding to learn a new, you deciding to learn a new subject, a topic, really dive into it. And also, too, with the shark energy coming, you know, out, you know, with you choosing that pile, dealing with emotions. And then the number four deals with emotional stability and security. I get, say, someone going through experiences that causes them to dive into themselves and understand themselves on a deep level like this brings me to say how like a relationship going bad and just disappointment and confusion led me down my spiritual path so i'm getting the feeling for that when it comes to a lot of you guys who selected this path this pile this path you might experience a lot of dark night of the soul moments and the dark night of the soul moments comes down to you know the fact of like holding on to the past and or holding on to ideas or ideals and not surrendering to the heart to the premonition to the intuition to higher counsel so it's a back and forth between familiarity what's familiar what and familiarity will feel safe even when it's destructive so this card shows challenges and with the challenges on the seven of swords in the reversal position, I get a person that has a hard time trusting themselves or even trusting people because of maybe gaslighting or manipulation that has happened in the past. And honestly, from my experience, I find that we struggle when it comes to trusting people when we can't trust ourselves, where when we can trust ourselves, then we don't look for other people to validate us. We don't we don't look for certain things from certain people. So the trust issues lessen when I learn to trust myself based on my experiences. When it comes to say unexpected, I love the emperor energy showing up and blessings of the queen of cups. Because with the emperor energy showing up as far as unexpected energy, it shows that you will become an authority with the, with the gray hair of the emperor wisdom. You will gain wisdom and become an authority within yourself when it comes to your experiences and learning about yourself. And I feel like there's nothing more beautiful than a person who feels unapologetically themselves. 
and is willing to stand in their truth. Like, I feel like time and experience has brought me to that. And I wish I had that earlier, but you know, time and experience brought me to it. Like when I look at younger people now, I'm so excited for them for their experiences and the things they've, they're, they're going to go through. But at the same time, like my heart leaps a little bit because I know how like confusing life can feel when we're looking for other people to validate us when we're look and, and we've been conditioned to be that way. So keep in mind, we've been conditioned to seek validation with the emperor energy and the unexpected position with everything you will experience with this transit, you will learn to stand in your truth and with the queen of cups coming out as the blessings, your intuition is going to be out of this world intuition out of this world in the sense that you will not wow you will not look for other people to tell you what time it is you will just know and you trust what it is that you know and you wait for confirmation as far as tangible things confirming what it is that you know and with say the unicorn energy coming out as a spirit animal for moving forward and the spirit guidance along with the shark energy moving forward the unicorn energy is trusting in that magic trust in your dreams because your dreams will heighten during this period and in order for your dreams to really heighten because we dream it's a matter of remembering you want to pay attention to your diet the things you're consuming if you're smoking drinking and eating junk that's going to get into the way of your dreams and if you're not sleeping properly you got to challenge yourself to get to bed on time and you know support and love your body by the things that you put into it but like yeah hands down when it comes to this transit i just get emotional stability emotional security and emotional awareness for you guys and for me once i became stronger within that area it just felt like the sky was the limit for me really so i'm really happy for you guys and what this will bring because just these two cards on the end here and even the world card here it's almost like you guys are entering into a cycle that you needed to enter into it's almost like this is the cycle of your life this is the experience of your life like you're within your season is what i'm getting and for me also i found that whenever i was able to say exercise and comfortably stand my ground within the family it just naturally flowed into the world so again like the family is where we experience everything from believe it or not and sometimes it's hard for us to see that and we feel like oh you know it was at school or it was with this ex or it was with the friend group but like in the family is where we experience most things first we experience a taste of certain things or we just experience things i feel like like for most people like when it comes to say betrayal or this or that and it could be seen as simple as the parent didn't take your side and took your sibling's side when you when you were the one that you know was in the right and it's like that moment of betrayal and then it kind of like you know continues to move forward like a snowball going down hill picking up momentum in school and in friend groups and things like that so you know with the four of the fourth house energy coming up in the cycle to me, it's like everything be be begins in the home, I feel. Everything begins with the parents or the caregivers or the first people that we had that kind of interaction with. So as we heal and we assert ourselves in those areas and we become confident in those areas, it naturally just flows everywhere else. When we allow ourselves to be ourselves around our family, it just flows everywhere else. And I know that's so easier than said for most people like or for a lot of people so i'm not telling you to go and push something or do whatever you know what feels right for you you know you do what feels right for you but i love how this energy feels moving forward when it comes to say how this saturn pisces transit will shift and shape your life with you be able you be able to controlling your emotions or becoming aware of your emotions this will also strengthen your intuitive psychic abilities, relationships, connections. It's like your whole life will benefit in a big way from this. Group number one, this was your message. Such a pleasure sharing it with you. If you'd like to check out my weekly exclusive pick a card readings only on Patreon, the link for that is in the description box below. If you'd like to book a private reading with me, that link is also in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a red heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. 
Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number two. You guys selected the octopus energy and this video is about how the Pisces Saturn transit is changing your life in what way like what's standing out when it comes to changes what am i seeing immediately my attention is going to the head of the octopus and i'm looking at the rainbow colors that are standing out there for me and then after going from the head my attention then goes out to like all the legs and hands of the octopus and what i'm getting from just the overall image that i'm looking at is when it comes to say the the, the saturn pisces transit the way this is going to change your life is that it's going to help you to focus it's going to help you to focus and when I say focus, when I look at the octopus head and all the different colors there, I think of the people who are good at so many different things and who have been having a hard time picking a path and just knowing what it is that they want to go after, knowing what it is that they want to do. I think of, say, my people who struggle with commitment issues. It doesn't even have to be relationship, but maybe it's that too. And it comes down to the fact that how fantasy and imagination is a ruling factor when it comes to, say, commitment and relationships or even just committing to a path when it comes to, say, a, a career wise, you know, and it's like, OK, but I'm good at this and I'm good at that. It's like I think of, say, the person which was me who one day, you know, oh, I'm going to start this fashion business. I'm launching a fashion career or whatever, like, you know, even going to school and pursuing a degree in it. But then the next day it's like, oh, I'm doing that. And it's like just going back and forth, but avoiding the main thing that I was really into and passionate about. And that's this, what I'm doing here. And it was a few things that made it hard for me to choose this path. Number one, I used to worry a lot about what other people think or what other people will, will think. Number two, I used to fear that people would think that I don't believe in God and that I'm not a good person because I'm engaging in this because I was raised in a family that, you know, is more religious, you know, in a Christian family. So even though, you know, People wouldn't say, well, I've had a few things said to me or said to me or about me uh, by uh, an adult that 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 opinion and or two adults who their opinions meant a lot to me. So that caused me to or three adults whose opinion meant a lot to me and that caused me to doubt myself. And that's when I realized who validates you, owns you. But then I also realized that when it comes to say them and their opinion, they were only speaking from their truth, their own personal experience. And they weren't wrong for that. But at that time, I wasn't mature enough to know that they're, that is their personal experience, not mine. That is theirs. And they have a right to see things and believe the way they want. And I shouldn't shape my life based on their experience because that is theirs. But I didn't know that at that time. So I was angry and resentful because, you know, I wanted to get permission. I wanted, you know, people to say, yeah, do this, do that. And even when there were situations when people told me to do something where I seek permission and people were like, yeah, you should definitely do fashion because you do so well when it comes to making clothes and this and that and the next or yeah, hair, you're, you know, people could only see me doing hair because I did it so well. And even though they supported that, like after a while, I didn't want to hear that because that's not what I wanted to do. So even though we say we want the support of people, we just want people to tell us what we want to hear. Because even when they're telling us what they think, what they think is the best thing, sometimes we can't hear that because that's not what we want to hear. So they tell us what we want to hear in one minute, but because there's not enough love for that thing, we don't follow through with it. So nothing happens. So at the end of the day, all of the noise and what everybody has to say really doesn't matter. It really just comes down to what's happening within us. So with the octopus energy, yeah, I'm getting say, you know, with, uh, learning how to focus, learning how to pick one path, realizing that trying to do a bunch of things at once is really just a waste of time, waste of energy. You're not getting anywhere from that, haven't been getting anywhere. And it's like, you just have to pick one thing. And when it comes to say doing my readings, I feel like a lot of my private readings come down to that, like me helping people to pick one thing because you know it's so hard for them to choose and when you really think about it it's really not that hard but it seems hard you know based on where you might be standing 
because I used to struggle with that, like having so many different things to choose from to where I didn't know how to choose one. Really, the path wasn't that hard to pick. It was just a matter of like being, feeling safe within myself to go after what was really in my heart. So this will reflect the area of life. And wow, we have the 12th house, uh, Sag and North Node. So Sag energy came up in the last reading. So definitely something having to do with say higher education or even teaching. The 12th house deals with subconscious spirituality. The North Node deals with destiny. So a lot of you guys who selected this pile, either you're going back to school dealing with medical to become a nurse, to become some kind of a teacher, some kind of a healer, someone, some kind of a spiritualist, or someone who is in a creative path. Like when I'm looking at the octopus, I'm thinking of someone who is playing the drum, someone who is dancing. You know, with 12th house energy, I think of, you know, a person dancing, cooking, singing, uh, just a creative career path. And with the North Node there, it's like figuring out destiny. So it's interesting how I started out this reading saying that with the octopus energy, that's what I'm feeling, someone picking a path. But when it comes to, say, the Pisces Saturn transit, like you're going to be able to become clear on destiny. A lot of you guys will sign up for school or start school within the two year process or even finish up school. But some of you are already in school or already had some credits, but might find yourself going for like doing like a major. Is it 180 when it comes to, say, what it is that you are studying and then what it is that you will start studying? But like, you know, a big things is coming up to me when it like, yeah, like I said, creative process. And normally with creative people, creative people has such a an abstract imagination. And because of that, it's easy to be all over the place. Like I was watching a few different uh, shows over the weekend or one mainly and this show on Netflix called the, uh, what is it called? The glory. If you've seen it, let me know in the comments. I thought it was so dark, but satisfying in its own way, but it's called the glory. And I thought how interesting, you know, a lot of the times I'll see in these movies or shows, the creative person is the one with the addiction, but I can see how that can come about. I, I could see how that could come about because the creative person is normally not the structured routine person and routines can really help us to be like be organized and consistent, especially if we're following a system that's guiding us towards our destiny, toward wherever it is that we want to go. So when it comes to, say, this group, I just get like destiny around healing others, around service dealing with healing destiny around teaching about subconscious, uh, uh, spiritual related topics and creative processes and things like that. But, um, I'm going to be selecting four cards. The first one is going to support the area of life. The second challenge, the third unexpected, the fourth blessing. Okay, wow. And this explained a lot. Okay, so when it comes to say area of life, the King of Pentacles came out. And whenever I do my coaching sessions and readings, I'll always use money as a way to get people to figure out what path they want to go on. And some people might misunderstand at first and say to me, it's not about money for me. And I'll say to them, I know it's not about money. It's a matter of getting money out the way to figure out what path you want to take. Because of money, we'll choose career paths. That's just not in alignment with our truth. That doesn't speak to our heart, but it's all about survival. So that's why I encourage like having a decent job that pays all the bills, but and having a decent job that pays all the bills and then using your free time to focus on your side hustle until the side hustle becomes the main hustle. But the king of pentacles is a factor here. So it's like finances is a big thing. And that could be why a lot of people are like all over the place when it comes to decisions, not knowing what to choose. And when it comes to challenges, yeah, finances again, pentacles, pentacles come up again. And it's like this person's presenting themselves. So when it comes to say challenge, it might be afraid that like this won't be a business, but I promise you any business can, any idea 
or anything that you're interested in can be a business. It's just a matter of being resourceful, recognizing the resources and being creative enough to present it to others because everything has a value and it's how much you're willing to charge and how much others are willing to pay for it. When it comes to unexpected page of swords, I get that you will stand your truth and figure things out. And when it comes to blessings, the blessings is, a interest, is interesting because the blessings is a sun card in the reversal position. And with the sun card in the reversal position, as far as blessings, this brings me to say how we'll pursue certain paths that isn't in our truth. And we won't thrive in those on those paths and we'll feel like it's unfair. Like, why am I not thriving? And it's like you're not thriving because you're really not interested in it. And maybe if you had thrived in it, you would have abandoned what's really in your heart. And that's something that I'll remind myself sometimes. It's like, wow, if this happened and that happened any different, I would have never, you know, been brave enough to revisit the path that I'm on now. When it comes to, say, the spirit animal moving forward, we have the turtle. And with the turtle energy, I'm getting take your time. Take your time, one step at a time. Because a lot of the times with, say, creative people or even the people that selected this group, you could find yourself jumping ahead when it comes to your, your plans to the point that you overwhelm yourself and then paralyze in place with procrastination because things just feel so bigger than you because you're looking too far ahead where it's like, you want to first like, okay, where am I trying to go? Like, where's the long-term goal? And you zoom out, look at the long-term goal. Where's the destination? How will I know when I've gotten there? And then zoom back in at where you're at and ask yourself what's next in order to get to that big term thing. So it's like you zoom out, where am I going? What, how will I know when I've gotten there? Oh, okay. I'm going, I'm going here and I'll know when I've gotten there because I'll see three big stars when I get there. So it's like zoom back out to where I am now, which is a big dis distance to where I'm trying to go. And let me focus on where I am now and the next step, like one step at a time is what I'm getting because you will overwhelm yourself when you think of all these great ideas and um, pertaining to what it is that you're trying to do and then nothing gets done. And then this is where some people struggle with escapism, whether it's eating or smoking or drinking or whatever you do because you feel powerless because you have all these ideas and nothing happened when it came to these great ideas that you have. So one thing at a time. So with this transit, it's going to help you to pick a path. So with all these different legs that the octopus has, instead of doing a million things at once, all of them will be doing one thing pertaining to the path that you pick, which will help you to move so much faster and further. You know, and once you've accomplished your goal when it comes to one thing, then you go back for the others. And like I tell the people that I'll do my sessions with, you know, when you pick the right of all the things that you're interested in, when you pick the right one that's truly in your heart of all the things that you're interested in, that one will make space for all of the others. So yeah, group number two, you know, the transit will help you to focus on one thing at a time help you to realize how the fear of money causes you to pick things that you're not truly into and also to how things in the past didn't work out it appears that things weren't working out in the past but they were actually working for you it was a blessing you know with the sun card in the reversal position when things appear to not go in your order it was a blessing it was redirecting you to the path that you're supposed to be on group number two it was a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to check out my weekly pick a card readings and other contents only on Patreon, the link for that is in the description box below. Also in the description box, you could find the link to book a reading with me if that's something that you're interested in. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Love yourself as if your life depended on it, because it does. Take care of yourself, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hello, group number three. You guys selected the cheetah energy, and with the cheetah energy, what I'm getting is, say, momentum. 
When it comes to, say, the Saturn Pisces transit, this transit will definitely help you when it comes to, say, momentum. What I'm getting from this energy is that in the past, you may have dragged your feet a lot when it comes to, say, doing certain things. And I feel like the dragging of the feet has everything to do with, say, fear of like not being received when it comes to, say, whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever it is that you want to do. When I look at the cheetah energy, I think about how people mature. Like what I love about being in the presence of older people is how like unapologetic they are. Like they just don't give a shit because they've come to a point where they realize that like you can't make people like you. And if a person ain't going to like you, you know, that's just their problem. It ain't yours and it ain't got nothing to do with you. So it's like when I observe certain older people, they just don't give a damn. And with the cheetah energy, I'm getting that's the kind of vibe that you're going to be on. And it's not on some bitter stuff because I find that the people who don't give a damn or who pers who come off to not give a damn, but really is coming from a bitter place, a hurtful place, is like those people actually care the most. And a person who's observant and can recognize real will know that those people are the ones that are truly bothered, the ones who are acting unbothered, but low key bitter. Where a person who's, who's genuinely unbothered knows that nothing is personal and a person's actions is a reflection of them and has nothing to do with them, even when it seems so personal. So it's like that person is genuinely unbothered because they know that excuse me, true word. In my culture, whenever you say something and you sneeze, they say true word. You are speaking that truth. So true word, but like, yeah, genuinely unbothered. And for me, I've learned to become genuinely unbothered by realizing that this person's action ain't got nothing to do with me. It's like me and a person, you know, was having a conversation the other night and the person, you know, basically got really passionate about what it is that they were saying to the point where they wanted me to validate what it is that they were saying. And I wouldn't because I didn't agree. But at the same time, like I wasn't coming out and saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. My response was like, okay, that's interesting. I see why you would see it that way. And that was it. But like, they wouldn't let it up because they wanted me to like surrender and say, yeah, I see it the way you see it. And before, you know, I know what it feels like to be them, to keep explaining something over and over again because I need company, I need validation. Where now I was able to like know what it feels like to be them, recognize myself in them, recognize myself being there and feel proud of myself for how much I've grown. But at the same time, being patient and understanding when it comes to them and realizing that it wasn't personal. So to me, genuinely unbothered means that you know that this has nothing to do with you. You know it has absolutely nothing to do with you. But at the same time, also too open to reflect and say, okay, what can I learn from this? So yeah, with the cheetah energy, that's definitely what I'm getting. Like I'm getting a sense of independence when it comes to say the Saturn Pisces transit, a sense of independence is what this transit will be bringing to you. And with the sense of independence, there's that naturally, genuinely unbothered, not the bitter bothered, the bitter unbothered, like genuinely unbothered. Because with the genuinely unbothered, there's no salty feelings or trying to like ignore or make somebody feel away. It's like, okay, I see where you're coming from because I've been there. And I don't judge you from where you're coming from because I've been there, like observing you right now, I'm seeing me, you know? So to me, yeah, it's, it, that's, that's it. So look at how the cheetah is just standing out against the background because this cheetah is going to the beat of its own drum. So when it comes to say the area of life, the number three comes up. So this could be communication. Um, communication could be something where you're communicating in a way that's more direct. You're communicating in a way that's clear with the moon energy there and Pisces energy there. To me, you're not projecting or learning not to project with the cheetah energy. It's like you're learning not to project. You're learning how you may have projected in the past and saw things that wasn't so because you were, you know, communicating 
or dealing with people based on, say, potential instead of the reality of what's happening. So instead of seeing things from a second to second basis, it's like it's like imagining what things could be instead of just seeing things. So with the Pisces and moon energy coming up to me, this is like also in the area of like, say, emotions, but also to intuition, premonition and psychic experiences. For some people or for a small amount of people, to me, I'm getting the feeling of releasing from the grip of the mother and the siblings. It's like something about the mother and the sibling energy where say before for maybe one person or a small few, you was always afraid of your mom or siblings being mad at you, your mother or family members being mad at you. And for that, you would kind of dim your light, blend in and not try to rock the boat or create any conflict. And it's not even about creating any conflict. But for someone I feel in the past, you may have felt like, you know, speaking up or speaking your truth or being separate from the group made it feel like you were starting problems. I get the person who felt like, you know, they were a troublemaker because they saw things different, because they spoke a little different. And from that, with the whole unbothered vibe that I was talking about and say, you know, someone genu um, someone acting unbothered, but it's coming from a bitter place. I feel like with some of you who selected this group, you may have had that kind of vibe with your family where it's like you felt ignored. You know, once you started talking about certain things or getting excited about certain things, you felt ignored. It's like everybody would just stop listening or just shut down or, you know, but something about the mother and the sibling where maybe your mom would ignore you or your siblings would ignore you and then gaslight you. And you're starting to realize that it's like, that's not me. You know, that's, that's their problem. Like they're so used to having things this way. And now that I'm stepping out of the, you know, stepping out of the conformity of things, you know, it's offensive because who do you think you are? Because I realize in life we're conditioned to see things in certain people away. I remember when I used to dress a certain way at school and a childhood friend would say, Kat, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are in the sense that like no one's dressing like that? Who do you think you are to dress like that? And I guess from a young age, like, yeah, like, who did I think I was, you know? And, and the reason why people say that is because it's, it's almost like a glitch in the matrix because everything's supposed to look a certain way and I'm not looking that way. So it's like, who do you think you are? So yeah, from a young age, that was the case. So with family members and friends, they might want to punish you because, you know, it's like you think you're better than them to show up and operate in a way that's so different from how everybody is doing things. And to me, it's one thing to be different seeking attention. And it's another thing to just follow your heart because, you know, you're guided on a certain path. Because I remember like feeling so broken because I wanted so much to like act like everybody else and be like everybody else. But it just felt like such an impossible task. Like I would be sad because I like I would want to be like everybody else, but it felt like there was something pushing me in another direction. And it's like, what is wrong with me? And I hated it. But it's like now that I've matured to like know myself, like I love it. Like I'm so proud of it. And I'm so proud of that force. The, the spirit guide ancestors, whatever supported me and pushed me in that way. So when it comes to the four cards that I've selected, so this is the area of life and the moon card came out again. So to me, I get like, say, you know, not before not knowing how to trust your emotions, not knowing how to trust your intuition. And I remember I used to say to myself, why does my intuition work with some people and not others? And it wasn't that my intuition didn't work with some people. It's just that I didn't want to see what my intuition was showing me when it came to certain people. Like I wanted to hold on to my imagination and ideals of how certain people are supposed to be, who they're supposed to be, how they're supposed to show up, even when they were showing up nothing like that. And I used to feel like I can't trust myself when I absolutely could have. I just wouldn't allow myself to see the truth. I would want to see projections. I would want to see the ideal version 
of these people. You know, I would want to see like the potential of these people, you know, what a, a certain person is supposed to be like instead of see what they're showing up and showing me on a consistent basis. And the minute I was able to see things for what it is and learn to have the relationships that I could have with a person and not have this idea of a relationship that doesn't exist because you could only have the kind of relationship you could have with a person and every relationship will be different with every person but I didn't know that I wanted to try to fit a square around circles you know so when it comes to say the challenges the challenges is judgment and for me when I look at the judgment card it always talks about faith to me so the challenge is faith and when it comes to say the challenge being faith, I feel like the challenge, the challenge is faith because you not knowing if you can trust yourself. And I remember when I stood my grounds and set uh, boundaries, I was a little bit scared because, you know, you were ra being raised religious and with scriptures and seeing things a certain way. You know, you start wondering like, OK, if I'm standing my ground against these people, what if something happens to me and I need them? And then it's like that back and forth, like fear. And it's like, OK, but that's not going to be the reason why I go against myself and choose this path or the next. It's like I need to stand my ground. I need to have faith. So to me, the challenge is faith and the way how to work on that is to reflect on hard times and how the universe has came through for you in hard times is how you work on this faith. Like get in your journal and remember those hard times and write about those hard times and how things always came through for you. When it comes to say unexpected and blessing, unexpected is that you're going to learn to surrender. You're going to learn to surrender to the changes that are happening in your life. You're going to learn to surrender because you're going to realize that the old ways of doing things just don't work. So you're going to surrender. And when it comes to say blessings, we have the seven of wands in the upright position. And if you look at this person, yes, they're defending themselves, but they're up high. They're in a good position to defend themselves. So what I get with the seven of wands and blessings is you're going to learn to assert your boundaries. You know, you're going to allow to assert your boundaries. And I've learned when it comes to a certain boundaries is not so much about words. It's about actions. Like instead of saying, don't call me after this time, I just don't pick up the phone. It's just that easy. Like, and if someone say, oh, you don't ever pick up the phone over at that uh, 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 after this time, like common sense, like clearly, like I must be asleep or for whatever reason, I'm not picking up the darn phone. But like, if you want to, you know, if you want to bring it up, I'll tell you, but like use your actions to assert boundaries and not your words, because your words will be gaslit when you're dealing with certain situations. And with this energy here, I feel like in the past, your words were gaslighted. So I feel like assert boundaries with your actions. They actually speak louder than words. And just also keep in mind too, you know, with certain people, it's not even that they're evil or bad. It's just that they're so accustomed to you showing up a certain way that's really beneficial for them because there's perks when it comes to it. And now with you showing up in a different way, it's like, it's not, there's no, it's, there's, a, there's a balance for you, but it's an imbalance for them because they were so used to like, getting extras with you being a certain way. So with the outer energy showing up as a spirit animal, when it comes to say moving forward, I'm looking at how this deals with the water element. And that's bringing me to saying emotional, uh, emotional availability for yourself and emotional awareness. What's coming to mind for this group is to not allow your past experiences to cause you to be bitter not allow your past experiences to cause you to reject and block love out of your life. Because I find that when we go through certain things, you know, if we allow ourselves to dwell too much and take on a victim consciousness mindset, which I believe is the worst thing that can happen to a person, it can cause us to like just expect for everybody to do us dirty, to feel like, oh, everybody is untrustworthy. Everybody is this, everybody is that. And you got to ask yourself, like, if you feel like you're a good person, then there has to be good people in the world, hands down. You can't be the only good person in the world. So if you believe that you're a good person, then there has to be a good person in the world. And if you and, and if you believe you're a good person, then it's possible for you to attract good people. But we can't attract good people if we're like projecting like, you know, certain things into the universe and seeing certain things a certain way, we're going to only attract more of what we feel about the world. So if we feel that people are a certain way, we'll attract more of what we feel because the universe is a big confirmation machine. 
it just confirms what you feel. Whatever you feel about life, you, are, you, you create more of what you feel. You pull towards you more of what you feel. So imagine your feelings are like a huge magnet and you just pull what you feel towards you. So if you feel like people are untrustworthy and awful, you'll pull experiences that confirms that reality. And pretty much that's what it is. But with the outer energy here, I'm getting to, you know, like emotions, getting to the bottom of your emotions, because that's going to strengthen your premonition and intuition and also help you to cipher and know who and what you're dealing with. Group number three, this was a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you would like to check out my weekly exclusive pick a card readings only on Patreon, the link for that is in the description box below. If you'd like to book a private reading with me, that link is also in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a yellow heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.